everyone. Welcome to our webinar today. Today's session is a customer presentation, uh, and the presenter is Bert Eusen from the Clinical Genetics Department at Erasmus MC in the Netherlands. Um, he will be speaking about whole genome MAC in Nexus copy number 7.5. Before uh, Bert begins doing his, his presentation, we're going to have short introductions from Biodiscovery and Multiplecom. Uh, we are hosting this webinar today along with Multiplecom. So first we'll do a little overview of Biodiscovery. It was uh, founded in 1997 with an exclusive focus on genomic data analysis software. The company is a pioneer in microarray image and data analysis and comprehensive data management, offering several software products. Today's uh, session, uh, in today's session, I'll focus on Nexus Copy Number, which is uh, the product used by Bert Eusen, who will be presenting in a little bit, and a new product we launched last year for uh, the Cytogenomics and Clinical Market, Nexus Clinical. So Nexus Copy Number is a powerful yet user-friendly software for integrated genomic data analysis and visualization. It allows you to integrate uh, data from different modalities, such as copy number, gene expression, and sequence variants. So you can um, view all that data together and garner more knowledge from it. It handles many different platforms, um, ACGH, SNP array, as well as next-gen sequencing data. And it was designed for researchers and scientists, so there is no uh, informatics knowledge required to use the software. It is uh, a, built on a flexible and modular design and can be configured to suit each user's uh, needs. So if there are certain features uh, that you don't need for your work, um, you can choose not to include them in the design. We also do offer a, an edition called Nexus Copy Number Discovery Edition, which includes all the different modules for a full a research analysis tools. So some of the advanced features of Nexus Copy Number are external data integration, which allows users to bring in gene expression results, uh, for example, to identify co-occurring changes. Statistical class comparisons and concordance for identification of differences between two sample populations and cooperating events. Enrichment analysis to identify pathways um, and gene ontology terms overrepresented in a gene list. Survival analysis to identify regions highly predictive of survival. And you can also create um, Kaplan-Meier plots with these. Clustering and factor enrichment allows you to group samples based on genomic alterations. And uh, two key new features in version 8, which we'll be releasing next week, is um, support for NGS analysis and single sample gene expression analysis. And I'll be uh, speaking more on this in just a minute. So one of the key features in version 8 is uh, copy number estimation from NGS data. And the uh, copy number estimated from uh, these are quite comparable to those obtained from arrays, and in some cases um, can actually uh, it can actually detect even smaller changes than can be detected by arrays alone. So, copy number from NGS uh, it allows you to get uh, use actually whole genome sequencing, whole exome sequencing, as well as targeted panels, and you can um, directly load and BAM files to detect copy number. Um, in addition to getting copy number from the sequencing data, you can also integrate sequence variants by loading in a VCF files, for example. The uh, single sample gene expression integration is another new feature in version 8. Uh, RNA, mRNA, and RNA-seq data can be loaded. It allows joint analysis of copy number and expression changes and helps gain additional knowledge about the molecular mechanisms in complex systems. Uh, a variety of different uh, data types um, can be loaded into the software. And it has uh, many advanced filtering schemas to narrow down gene lists by fold change or by co-occurring 
co-occurring events to identify clinically actionable genes or disease predictors. So just a few screenshots from Nexus copy number. Here's a multi-sample view. Um, this is a breast cancer data set. On the top is the uh, frequency plot for gains on, in blue, red, and losses. Below this are where the so region or annotation tracks are. And down here, each individual sample is listed with its uh, aberration profile. Clicking on the sample name will take you to another window, which has information specifically for that sample. Um, this is the same uh, view, just zoomed in a little bit, um, of a different data set where you can see that the multiple column tracks are included here. And this um, project also had sequence variants integrated. So here in the individual sample tracks, you can see these little um, I guess uh, diamonds here and triangles, these all represent sequence variants. Um, further zooming in um, on the region allows you to see the Amplicon IDs and clicking on one of these will take you to Multicom's website. For a single sample views, here's uh, an overview of the chromosomes. The losses and gains are adjacent to the chromosome ideograms. Uh, the colored regions on the chromosome itself indicates allelic status. Um, and the little, <clears throat> excuse me, shapes here, the triangles and diamonds um, in different colors indicate different sequence variants. This is um, the log ratio plot across the whole genome of a single sample. And down here is the B allele frequency plot from a SNP array. And then um, one of the new features, the gene expression integration on a single sample basis. Um, this shows you a single chromosome, which um, has a loss across the whole chromosome. Up here is the log ratio plot. This is the B allele frequency plot. And below is the um, gene expression results. You can see a decreased expression across this whole region. Um, another key feature of Nexus copy number is uh, the Nexus DB, which is a web-based genomic repository. It allows secure and redundant backup and, um, and acts as an archive for projects. It allows for queries across multiple projects. Um, these can be based on sample phenotype or genotype. It allows you to share projects with collaborators by creating groups with restricted access. And you can also download uh, public data sets that are ready to be analyzed immediately, such as those from TCGA or GEO. And the TCGA Premier product is um, a product that can be added onto Nexus copy number. It utilizes the Nexus DB <laughs> architecture, and it consists of reanalyzed and manually curated data from the TCGA portal. It allows easy access and download of this high quality data. Uh, we have many different cancer data sets available there. Um, these are all listed on our website, and we do update the uh, database, uh, the cancer data sets continually. Um, earlier, I mentioned um, a new product we introduced last year, Nexus Clinical. This um, actually came out from uh, originally when Nexus Copy Number was introduced. It was designed for scientists and researchers. But eventually, Cytogenomics Labs started using it. We started adding more features for that workflow, but decided that a separate software system would be better suited for it. So Nexus Clinical was designed to support the clinical case review workflow and data management and um, provides high quality and accurate results and at the same time streamlines the process. Um, it is platform independent, so a lab utilizing different technologies for their tests only has to learn one software to analyze all the data. Um, often a typical lab will use different software solutions for analysis versus reporting versus storage and management. With Nexus Clinical, it is all accomplished in a single solution, making it a much more organized and efficient system. Um, Nexus Clinical is quite efficient and reduces um, overall turnaround time for report generation. Um, this is achieved by streamlining the workflow using established protocols. Um, it also offers many automated features um, that remove, remove laborious manual repetitive work while decreasing the chance of manual error. 
These include filtering and pre-classification of events. And it also offers a central location for data storage and management. Um, users are able to log in from any location. So even if a reviewer is on the road, he can access cases and continue working on them. The system also has different uh, access control for uh, different users, allowing uh, each one to have a different role in the review process. So for example, some users may be able to just load and process the data, a different uh, person might be the one reviewing it and can uh, make notes and edits. There's also a system administrator that manages all the data as well as the type of data that can be loaded into the system. Um, and this ensures consistency that in that everyone's using the same tracks and annotation files. It also has a, a variant interpretation assistance system. It's a decision tree support system that automates the pre-classification of genomic events. Uh, and this is based on a lab's classification rules. So the system allows different types of data to be classified according to different rules prescribed by the administrator. So for example, postnatal samples um, would follow a different review process than cancer samples. Um, this really removes a lot of the manual work uh, and also ensures that the analysis is performed in a consistent manner following um, the lab's protocols. And the system is uh, very scalable, so if a lab has a few hundred samples or tens of thousands, it works across all those cases. Also, if a lab is uh, starting out and only has a few samples, it's very easy um, to use the system when later on they have you know, hundreds and thousands of samples. So for more information on Biodiscovery and products, please visit biodiscovery.com. We'll also be at the ASAG annual meeting in Baltimore next week. We're holding an ancillary event there on Thursday at lunchtime at the Sheraton Harbor Hotel. Uh, the talk will feature both the Nexus copy number and uh, Nexus uh, clinical software. We have a couple of customers who will be doing presentations during that time. We have two posters um, at ASAG as well uh, on both Nexus copy number and Nexus clinical. And details can be found on our website. Uh, next month, we are doing another webinar and uh, another customer presentation, Dr. Matthew Breen of North Carolina State University. So if you're interested in that on comparative cytogenomics, uh, please feel free to sign up for it on our website um, under the events page. It is listed currently. Thank you very much. And with that, I'm going to hand it off to Dan Bruchowski from Multiplecom. Thank you very much. So I will uh, introduce briefly our company and the technology behind our innovative whole genome Mac. So Multibucom is a vertical integrated company. And our mission is to develop, manufacture, and commercialize molecular diagnostic kits for NGS. So far, as a matter of speaking, we are applications should be run on sequences. Currently, we do not make instruments nor software for data analysis, although the latter is fully supported referring to other tools on the market. Our product line spans from genetic predisposition over actionable somatic mutations to non-invasive prenatal testing. These are all built around our core technology, the MASTER technology. MASTER is an acronym for multiplex amplification of specific targets for resequencing, meaning each MASTER assay built on multiplex PCR-based amplification of selected targets as a front end for NGS. The robustness of our technology brings a number of benefits. Individual master products are provided as ready to use. Their workflows are simple and uniform, making pre-implementation straightforward. Their performance characteristics have ensured a broad market acceptance, particularly among diagnostic laboratories. The innovative MAC assays enables fast and reliable confirmation of previously detected CNVs 
with little or no optimization. They are founded upon the same proven multiplex amplification technology as our master essays. Only here the PCR products are automatically labeled fluorescently, thus enabling reliable amplicon quantification, making MAC essays ideal for copy number confirmation. At Multiplicon, we have three MAC-based solutions for CND confirmation, namely whole genome MAC, which are the solution we will speak about today, where you can simply select among thousands of pre-designed genome-wide essays, or the region of interest MAC, where you can design your own essay according to your region of genomic region of interest using our free web service, or the Praga Mac, which is one of our exome-specific exome Macs. In this case, it's a, uh, uh, for analyzing CMDs in the Praga 1 and Praga 2 genes. Common to all Mac essays is they have a fast and uniform workflow. It only takes five hours from start to end. And what you would need is a thermocycle, standard laboratory equipment, a thermocycle for the PCR reaction, a genetic analyzer for the gene scan, and a computer for the data analysis. Multiplicum even offers a free data software package for the doses calculations. The multiplex PCR is a one step closed tube reaction limiting the potential risk of cross-contamination. Whereas Prac and Mac is provided as ready to use, the other customized uh, Macs, the whole genome Mac and the region of interest Mac, are, uh, are bounded on the Mac control from Multiplicum. Mac control is provided as a ready to use PCR Mac. It amplifies six control amplicons, enabling reliable doses analysis. And it has the possibility of five, up to five customizable specific target amplicons, which are ordinary primers that are added to the master mix of the control Mac, helping to keep down the cost. And once the primers are in-house, you just add them to the master mix and according to a fixed mixing scheme, keeping the everything simple and fast. At the end, you add the DNA before running the multiplex PCR. The primers are designed in such a way that the PCR cycling conditions are shared between all MAC assays. This allows you to easily test several potential copy number targets in parallel. The MAC PCR products from the multiplex PCR reaction are then used for gene scan analysis. How is this possible when only unmodified primers have been used? But for the amplification, amplification of the custom targets, it is possible thanks to an innovative fluorescent labeling technology of the amplicons, which occurs during the multiplex reaction. This contributes to a simple and affordable workflow. Thereafter, a, a effortless doses calculation can be performed using our free Mac S software, together enabling fast and reliable CMV confirmation. Whole Genome Mac is the focus of today's LabEx. Before passing you on to Bert Houston, I will briefly introduce the Whole Genome Mac to you. Multiplicum's Whole Genome Mac is a CMV detection tool integrated within the Nexus copy number software. This means as you detect a potential copy number event while analyzing your NTS or microRNA data inside the Nexus copy number, then the whole genome MAC integration enables you to instantly identify an appropriate whole genome MAC assay for your confirmation experiment. 
you can choose among tens of thousands essays. Multiplicom provides two whole genome map data sets. Each set, the whole genome map, um, 125 and, and 30, contains pre-designed amplicons with an average amplicon spacing of respectively 125 and 30 kilobaxes, giving you access to the tens of thousands of essays right within the copy number software. If you want more information, I can refer you to our product page and for ordering, the shipment will be available at the end of the month. And by this, I believe I will hand you over to Bert Usen. The start of the presentation and I will show some live uh, um, applications, how we are using Mac in our hands. And also I will start with an historical uh, point. In 2012, I think um, Multiplicon launched the region of interest, or at that time, FlagQ Mac uh, uh, web service for free. And how we are using it, you see a father and a mother and a patient with a relative big deletion on chromosome 14. Uh, and first, you have to define your region of interest, and we defined it out and inside the deletion so that we have maximum of information. This start and end can chromosome is entered in this web form and after two, five minutes you get a reply web by mail uh, with the primers and the essay information you need. After the run in the MACS software uh, you see clearly that the father has an equal copy number for the controls and the target of the region of interest, and you see that the child has a deletion for the three in red and the one we choose outside in gray, and that's the design which came from the website from the multiple. Knowing this, we, we thought about that if it would be possible to have a, in a very a virtual whole genome, genomic UPCR design, of course, we were started at that time, or we were busy with uh, arrays, and we had 100 to 150 KB, and we needed a validation tool. It is all, it should be a low pre-investment, uh, small scale based. We only have trios or four or five individuals in the family, and it has to be relative fast. So the design, the run, and the analysis should be, we thought, within a week. So we challenged a few companies, and um, the one who picked it up I think seriously and also really first one was Multiplicon and we designed together with their bioinformaticians 125 KB spaced flag tube Mac concept in build 18 and uh, single tube and all these things are mentioned by Dan. Uh, we use this for different projects and we had a poster at the Sanger Genomic Disorders meeting in 2014-15, the papers are coming out, One, some are in preparation. Uh, for those who can download thesis, uh, the forecast development and active balance is a thesis from Aaron Roses, and there are already uh, images inside of the, the thesis, uh, but he's working on his paper, and there is a UV myeloma project, a cancer project of the eye, where we also use the MAC assay. Uh, in 2014, there was also a start of the validation process in clinical genetics. Of course, the, one of the requirements is uh, an objective uh, primer design and a standard protocol, so there was a need for change. Uh, and in 2015, uh, when uh, arrays were improved and uh, also NGS copy number came in the workspace, we challenged and we, and in collaboration, a 30 KB space build 19 version of the Mac is, was launched. And uh, that's the current uh, state. And uh, there we, we made also the integration together with this Multiplicon and uh, Biodiscovery for the integration in their software. To give you an idea, we have run about 200 Mac assays at about 700, 670 Amplicons. It is difficult to um, tell how many amplicons are successful. We calculate successful is informative 
if the essay is informative, sometimes you, there's one outlier, but the other two are very informative. So it is about 79%, amplifons a little bit lower. This gives you an overview how many we are used. And the, the big projects used to build 18 old uh, design. We have 41 region of interest assays. And um, let's say the last three months, we uh, ordered um, 1,700. This is all genome MAC2, 125 KB uh, assay, and six uh, higher resolution ones. So this um, brings me also to the fact that I would like to mention that we are using Nexus copy number for the analysis tools, but also for the data integration. And like what we just mentioned already before, you can load in all type of arrays, you can load in all kind of tracks, and I have to mention that you can use it also for flagging or filtering, that's how you want to define it. Copy number tracks, you can load in events or even log R and BLD frequencies from the NGS. Sequence variations also mentioned. I want to have fish, MLPA, mark and sequence, Sanger sequencing assays into the environment. And to summarize, in principle, everything can be uh, visualized if it has a genomic location. So from some start and then identify. And here are four few examples. The first one is uh, an array. So first, I have to mention the scheme for the people who are not so familiar. So this is more a, a frequency of all the events. So we see 100% in the gain and 100% for the for scale for the deletions. Here is the environment for the tracks, and these are the samples you are running. So you see that we have uh, these cipher tracks and we have our uh, all our MAC assays we are performed in our lab, the content of the arrays, and here we have already the two MAC um, tracks for the two different types. You can load in arrays, you can load in uh, variances, which are already also shown. We can show MAC assays, and here is our way of treating the the arrays, and on all of them you can click and you got the information. Here's from the MAC, here's from the genomic variant information, and if you click on this copy number event, you get a, uh, a drill down view on the region to have an impression of the deletion. So to continue from that, to, I would also have to highlight what we are doing with uh, arrays and copy number exomes. So this is a traditional uh, Illumina pattern of a human melanoma uh, case. You see the log ratios and the allele, and we challenged um, our bioinformatician together with the, uh, the people from Convex to create a similar feel and look as we have in the arrays. This is a whole exome sequence data from Agilent B4, BBA and GATK uh, variant file created creating, in principle, we are creating a log R file with the contact software, and we adapted it a little bit, because we also use the PCF file to generate, as we call, a pseudo buff, which is presented here in the bottom. So, knowing this, I will go move to the Nexus integration, and as I, this scheme is already shown, and I want to show this, because the tracks there's a lot of um, knowledge behind the tracks because the tracks are taking um, in account the segmental duplications, the centromeres, the telomeres, and also, which is mentioned by Dan, the assay match between all the uh, products generated in the tube should match with the temperature and the GC content. So that's in taken in account. And here we have an example where we see the two tracks, 125 and the 30 kb. You see these blue groups and reds. They representing a, sp a specific assay. So that's the oh, that's a little shift in the oh, there's a shift in the in the annotation. But if you click on one of these blue ones, which present one assay, you will directly get this as a return from the website from Multiplicon. I will show that later on live. Um, and to give you a first 
without a live demo, this is how we are using it. This is a, an Agile P4 and an array, Illumina 850 array. We are move, zooming in in this region. This is known as a polymorphic region, but we were still interested in this area. Uh, zooming in in this area, you will see that there is a difference in content. The array is higher before, uh, in content. There are less genes in this region. You see that the segmentation is different. It's related to content and settings. And we choose to use this MAC assay as a valid first validation. And then I'll go to, you see here are the four um, assays. And after the run, this one was deleted. The other three were not deleted. And we said, OK, nice. Now we zoom in to this region, to the blue assay. After the run, the two first two ones are deleted, which is confirming the array and gives up some things to thought about the settings for the NGS. The last uh, amplicon is, the, is identical with the one which we used in the 125. And the small one in black, because this uh, design was uh, H19 design, and it was has a unique location. So we were doubting why this was not performing uh, very well. So after mapping this, this primer set again, it turned out that in built GLCH38, it were multi loci loci for this product. So that gives you also an impression that, that, that the design is built related, but that's for all of us is known. So which is left is that we have to think about the, the parameters of the settings. And you know that's mainly due to the to the noise level and to the number of probes. So um, this will brings me also that you cannot do this for every uh, validation with these powerpoints and these dots and uh, the, the things around or everything and the screen captures. So I thought we should bring in the Mac essay results into the um, Nexus software. Um, as mentioned, uh, the, the, after the PCR reactions, the, the plates are uh, performed in the ABI uh, system. The scan data is there. And you can use the MacS software or GeneMark. MacS software generates the, the control regions, like these six, and displays also nicely the log R value of the four, in this case, four amplitude. Gene marker has a little bit different display in, in, in basic, it's basic, uh, is basic. It's displaced on the size of the bin, and you uh, uh, in the PDF report there is a order list where they are ordered in genomic location. But this is the graph you get out of uh, Gene marker. We were not convinced uh, with that output, and uh, or happy, uh, so we looked for. Um, our own development. This is principle based on our own oligo order system. We needed to do some conver uh, conversion to get the data from GeneMarker into our own software. And why we are doing this? Because we would like to follow the amplicon, the fraction, and the technician performance in time to follow them and see if it is a technical issue that, or a pipetting issue, or it is a uh, dilution issue, or is it more related to the Amplicon itself. Um, this shows you the same uh, data. We, um, from the gene marker environment, we load in the Amplicon name and the log R from our oligo system. We get back uh, our uh, genome location, and this uh, annotation is the status we do by hand, and this is set by the threshold setting, which is possible to change yourself. So after Pressing this button, there's a track automatically saved in a specific folder. And that's the way which in the following and also in the live demo, uh, the, the, the data points of the Mac are displayed. So the, I will, um, the, we, I had three cases prepared. One is the, already I showed you in the PowerPoint. If interest, I can show them also live. But the two cases which I'll show live is a 4Q duplication from, um, um, Forgot development um, family, 
and uh, a 15Q11 deletion, which is normally not um, um, evaluated, so let's say skipped, because it is in the middle of the repetitive region, but due to some clinical information, we had some interest in the region. So I think I now skip to the live demo, and I hope everyone can see my next screen. So first you have to load in your data, and you have to choose in the options the tracks from Multiplicom. And in my view, they are in the bottom. So you see the, the on the 25 and the 30 KB, and I think in version 8, and there will be also um, a nice window where all the products from Multiplicom are presented. And um, on my computer, I choose these two, and you say apply, and um, I'll go to the data. I selected the case, which I was my 4Q uh, duplication, and this is how the screen looks. You see this is the frequency plot. Here are the individual uh, samples. This is the father, child one, child two, the mother. And we will, we will focus on chromosome four and to validate this region. So I move to chromosome four. This on the Q band of 35. And you see clearly that the duplication is, uh, is inherited from the mother. Um, and we had some interest to, um, to validate this region. And so what we did, we choose this red group, which is presenting one assay, and we choose this blue one. And if I click on this link, you will directly see that this is the reply from the um, Multiplicom um, website, and it is presented in two formats. One format is based on assay-based, of course it is an assay forward reverse, the size and the start in the end. Uh, the ENC file, which is needed for the um, Mark S software, and this uh, format is um, made for the ordering system, because what you can do is just cop uh, select, copy paste it into your uh, an, uh, ordering system, and then it can directly be ordered from this view. Um, so doing that and ordering these two MAC assays, I um, uh, performed them, I brought them in, in for every MAC assay from the product which I mentioned before from our application, and if I select this group and I view them, the view will go back to the whole genome. I go to chromosome 4 and zoom again into chromosome 4, and then you see a more wealthy environment where we have still the same order of father, child 1, child 2, and mother, and you see in the blue and in the pastel brown, the representation of the MAC assay. And you see that clearly that there are blue ones, and here also in the other one, are representing the duplication. The same for the child too. And we had some problems with the DNA quality of the mother, um, because there were some uh, amplicons not uh, passing the thresholds, but they are Almost, they are not just not passing the threshold, but I, I just would like to, to put it in because directly you can see that the DNA, uh, there is a DNA problem with this uh, sample of the mother in the concentration. Focusing on this, we um, we see also some uh, regions where the the MACSA is confirming that the BLE information, and for that I want to limit the amount of data, and I will throw out a few of these, and I'll just, if I view it now, back to this problem, four, uh, if you know it like 
this. Now you can. Yeah, this one. Oh, I will focus on this area, and if I go in the options in Next, is it that you can show the pros? No, I will not do that one. I will do this. I will do this one. No. Ah. This one. Here you see that. Now the two areas which are here clearly uh, duplicated, it is difficult from the analysis settings that it gets that it, this region is also uh, duplicated and there are very few data points in the BLE. But BLE is giving you a clear, a better answer to the region of the duplication than the log ratio. And on the and that is helpful, and we can use this for re to have a, to manipulate or not to to fine tune the, the setting of the uh, copy number analysis. So I will move now to another case in time. So we will look for an other case, which is the um, did some ordering in front. This has a, a different setup. Here we are looking to a deletion, and the deletion is um, it's not true here. Select view. So we are now focusing on chromosome 15, and I um, we go to chromosome 15. So the two. The first three were father, father, patient, probant, mother, and the arrays didn't show any deletion. There was a big LOH, a regional homozygosity stretch, but we, that's something we it is there, but we leave it in this in this story out of the discussion. And suddenly, and, and in a suddenly, that's the wrong. At a certain moment. The NGS data came on, and we looked at that, and we saw a small deletion here in this uh, region. And um, of course, normally this would be skipped because it's very close to the centromere. But there was some clinical interest to, to for this region and to ex to to define it if this is really deletion or not. And we performed the um, MAC assay and the two MAC, which were just present in the 125 uh, data track, we, we ordered, we validate, and we confirmed that this one was a um, deletion. I will show shortly back to the um, only the patient data. Mm. And that shows you that the, the, the probe content is so different. Okay. This is on the put away. I need sorry. And then I don't need a father. I just don't. So I can go back to chromosome 15, zoom in, and then you show the probes. You see clearly that the amount of probes in the array is not enough if you could call. And only for this small region, which is in one of the exomes or genes, has enough probes to make the call. So this gives you a how you can use it to confirm uh, also uh, re, uh, deletions in difficult areas. And I think I will move. I will not delete, but I will move to my PowerPoint. And before the two last two slides, I will move. Uh, and then, so to summarize, I think we showed that we have fully integrated the MAC assay in the work process. Uh, the implementation and the clinical genetics is um, 
underway. It is a simple validation option. I think 95% uh, is successful in the first run. As mentioned, it is a one-tube reaction, relative low DNA input, I think 10 nanograms. This objective primer design, we don't have to worry about our designs. Um, it is a fast, because to look to the whole process, it takes us um, 10 minutes for the selection. A normal ordering process takes one or two days. A MAC run depends on the availability of the ABI system, two days. Analysis, 30 minutes, so that in general takes, it is possible to do this in five working days to have a validation ready. There are some remarks I have to make. The reference model, uh, often we are looking in difficult regions. There are CNV uh, regions under the, under the hood, and you have to be aware that you need, that your reference samples should be well chosen and um, that they are enough. So um, we are working at this moment on this pooled DNAs, and uh, so far this works good. Um, as I mentioned, we I misused the data, the software types of um, biodiscovery to present the mock data. I challenge, uh, or we know that that biodiscovery will pick this up, and um, I hope in the next version we will have an official validation data type available. For Multiplicon, the need for researchers is always higher resolution and maybe even axon-based MAC design, but that we'll learn in, in the future how many interest is in, is in this product. And as mentioned, I, Multiplicon, they have three nice integrated product lines. And uh, also what's from, I think, depending on the reply and the requests of, of the users, I think there will be a MacS version, new MacS version in the future, and well, genome research is is improved, and the, I think everyone is looking now to uh, GFCH38 and um, to to have the best uh, uh, amplicon position and uh, uh, quality controlled. Uh, 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 data track for the Mac assays available. So all this work is not done by myself. Uh, so I'm working in Guzmanli the client. Tom Erwin Brosens has already mentioned. Tom is doing all the bioinformatician work. The arrays are running in an array service we have in in the house. The NGS data is generated at the biomics service, NGS service. Convex is in close collaboration with Partibon. I will not explain the, the last name. Multiplicon, a lot of discussion with Dan and with Derek, the bioinformatician, and the nice support from Alessio and Soal about the ongoing discussions on data types. So I will stop and I give them my back to the presenter, to the organizer. Thanks. Thank you very much, Bert.